I've been theorizing about the FNAF lore on this channel for over half a year now, and yet an element of the story that's always stumped me is Phone Guy, likely the most mysterious employee of Fazbear Entertainment. What is his purpose? Why is he here? And does he have a dark secret that we've missed for all this time? Today, I'm here to answer those questions and more. And in case you guys don't know, a brand new FNAF game just got announced, and I believe it's gonna help us understand who Phone Guy actually is. So strap in folks, because today I want to solve the mystery of Phone Guy. So what's the actual name of this new game, and what is it about? Well, it's not actually a game, it's an interactive book. If you don't know, an interactive book is basically like a choose-your-own-adventure novel where you can influence the outcome of the book's story. The reason I call it a game is because it looks to be extremely versatile, with over 25 possible endings and two difficulty settings. But anyway, this book is called FNAF The Week Before and supposedly it's an interactive prequel to the first Five Nights at Freddy's game that appears to take place inside the universe of the games. This is a record for FNAF books because, as Scott Coffin said, most of the FNAF books and games exist in separate universes, and it's very rare for what to be confirmed to be in the game's universe. So, if this FNAF book is special enough to get its own spot in the canon of the games, what's the big deal with it, and why is it important? Also, what does Phone Guy have to do with any of this? Well, let's get right into it. The description of the book says that it's a prequel to FNAF 1, and by the title of the book we can guess that it takes place the week before Mike Schmidt spends his nights at Freddy's. Since it also says that you will be playing as a security guard in the book, I think it's also safe to assume we'll be controlling Phone Guy. In the FNAF 1 phone calls, which are pre-recorded by Phone Guy, he says that he worked in that office before us, and that the 7 days he's currently working there are his last before leaving the company. However, he never makes it to the end of his week, as he is killed by the animatronics on his fourth night. Thus, if this book is about Phone Guy, that means we might get to see more of his character, and begin to understand why he's such a long-lasting employee of Fazbear Entertainment, and what the company means to him. The reason I say this is because we know from the FNAF Free training tapes, where Phone Guy brings up Springlock suits, that they have been discontinued. Since they were likely discontinued before 1985, as the suits weren't in professional performance use during the Missing Children incident, we can conclude that Phone Guy has likely been a member of the company since its inception in 1983. To be a member of such an obviously shady company for at least 10 years, FNAF 1 takes place in 1993, definitely shows that Phone Guy has a reason for remaining in these establishments for so long. I have a headcanon that I thought didn't have any basis in the actual lore, but actually might, that Phone Guy was the father of Fritz, the kid who possessed Foxy. This explains why he loves Foxy so much and why he chose to stay at Fazbear. In a kind of twisted irony, his kid, who loved Foxy as much as he did, ended up possessing him and Phone Guy refused to leave the company due to his immense guilt for abandoning his child and letting him get kidnapped. So he stays at Fazbear, whiling away his days and hoping his child would somehow return, even though he knew it was impossible. This is an explanation for Phone Guy's story. He's a guilty parent trying to come to terms with the death of his child. Does this have any evidence to support it? Let's see. First off, he seems very aware of the dangers of Freddy Fazbear's pizza. He knows that the animatronics become hostile at night, and that it's very likely Mike will die. He also accepts his fate when the animatronics get to his office, asking Mike to check the suits in the back. Hey, do me a favor. Uh, maybe sometime uh, you could check inside those suits uh, in the back room. Uh, I'm gonna try to hold out until someone checks. Maybe it won't be so bad. This implies he also suspects the kids were stuffed in those suits, but it's not certain. As well as that, he sounds pretty upset when he tells the player that someone, likely William Afton, used a yellow spring bonnie suit that was in the back in FNAF 2. This could mean that he knows a man in that mascot costume lured his son and some other kids to kill them. We had a spare in the back, a yellow one. Someone used it. Now none of them are acting right. As well as that, there's a massive piece of evidence that might prove this theory. And let me tell you, it's absolutely insane. In FNAF 2, we place two different night guards, Jeremy Fitzgerald on nights 1-6 to six, and Fritz Smith on the custom night. Fritz gets fired from the company on his first night shift for, quote, tampering with the animatronics. While a lot of people think this is Michael Afton, I have a very different idea. Lots of theorists have pointed out that the first name to the night guards in FNAF 2, Jeremy and Fritz, correlate to the names of the victims of the MCI that got stuffed into Bonnie and Foxy, respectively. While a lot of people have pointed it out, I've never seen any theories on what this actually means, but I have an idea. 
Lately, FNAF theorists have been playing around with the idea that Cassie's dad, who is most likely the player character in Help Wanted 2, is actually the Bonnie boy we see in the FNAF 4 minigames, as well as Jeremy Fitzgerald from FNAF 2. I have a problem with that last one, but I'll talk about that in a different video. What really matters is that the reason that the Bonnie victim is called Jeremy is because the kid who helped get the crying child killed at Fredbear's, who was wearing a Bonnie mask, had that same name. So this is the reason this name pops up so often. William picked out a random kid and pinned the death of his child on him. It's awful. Now, how does this apply to Fritz Smith? Well, while many people thought he was actually Michael Afton, like I said, I have a different idea. I think that Fritz Smith is actually none other than Phone Guy. Now hear me out, because I have proof. On the Night 6 phone call we hear in FNAF 2, Phone Guy mentions that he'll probably work the night shift after us. Uh, when the place eventually opens again, I'll probably take a night shift myself. Okay, good night, and good luck. On night 7, we play as a character called Fritz. Remember how I said Phone Guy could be Fritz's dad? Yeah, this cannot be a coincidence. Bear in mind that it was very common for kids in the US to have the same name as their dads in the 70s to 80s, so Phone Guy being called Fritz Smith and the Foxy victim being called Fritz Jr. isn't too much of a stretch. While on his shift, Phone Guy, or Fritz Sr., looks inside the original Freddy animatronics to try and find the bodies of the MCI kids, and ultimately his son. He fails as the bodies aren't inside the mascots anymore. I go into detail about this in this video, so go check it out if you want a more detailed explanation. This results in him getting fired for tampering with the animatronics, as we just explained, and odor. Not because he's a corpse, but because it's established in the FNAF 2 phone calls that the original Freddy band still smells weird. However, since he's such a loyal employee, and since, to be honest, Fazbear Entertainment is on its deathbed as a company, they rehire him just in time for the reopening of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza in 1993, where he ultimately dies. The interesting thing is that Foxy isn't in the office when Fort Guy dies. He's knocking on the door. So maybe he was trying to stop the others from killing his dad? This last bit sounds like some cringe fanfiction from like 2015, so I'm not willing to bet my money on that last statement being true, but this train of thought is still interesting nonetheless. So let's get back to the week before book and discuss my expectations and predictions for it and why I think it reveals some elements of the lore. First off, this thing has over 25 different endings. If we presume that 5 of those are dying by the normal animatronics, one of them is finishing the game normally and the other is the harder difficulty we heard about, that still leaves us with 18 more endings. That's a lot of material, so I'm pretty confident we're definitely gonna learn something. Like I said, this book is likely about Phone Guy's last week, which could possibly tell us more about how Fazer Entertainment operates as a company. Why did they reopen Freddy's? Did they know about the MCI? And so on. As well as that, the description for the book states that there will be six nights spent at Freddy's. Wait. If Phone Guy dies on night 4, then why do we get to play until night 6? Well friends, remember what Security Reach Ruin taught us. Just because there are multiple endings doesn't mean that they all actually happened. So it's likely that one of the endings we'll get in FNAF the week before is dying on night 4 to all the animatronics combined. This will likely be the base ending and the true one for the book. That doesn't mean the other information isn't true however, as we will definitely get valuable info about FNAF 1 when the book comes out in fall. From a non-lore standpoint, I'm really excited for this book because it looks to be really fun and a different take on the franchise that I'm super hyped to see. It feels refreshing compared to the multiple similar style books we've been getting lately. As well as that, I have high hopes for the different endings and difficulty modes. But who knows, maybe this book will have nothing to do with Phone Guy. Maybe we'll get introduced to a new character or maybe this will be from the point of view of an already established hero. I genuinely have no idea. But I think Phone Guy is the strongest candidate thus far. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting. It helps me out a lot, and I love reading my viewers' comments and seeing what you all think about this franchise. That being said, yet again, thanks for watching, and never stop overthinking. Hey, you, yeah, 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 you, 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 don't click off yet, don't click off yet, like, seriously, since you're still here, please consider joining my Discord, uh, I need some more activity, so, yeah, see ya.